Ông quy chụp Ông chung mình chụp đẹp và cả một tổ Cái chụp nạc ca này thì xạm nạc ca Xạm nạc ca tổ tần đi Ông đẹp đòi việc ca chung từ Dạ mình thì vì cả việc cái đấy Là mình mình nó cả Tăng xâm hồn định đào chụp hồn nạc chụp nín Đại tập bốn này đòi việc ca chung từ Cầm dạ mình vì cả việc cái đấy lục ở nguồn chìa Thank you, uh, Mr. President. So, Mokun Lopatian. Good afternoon, Mr. Hinton. So, Mr. Hinton. I have quite a few uh, follow-up questions um, in relation, especially to some questions posed by uh, the prosecution yesterday. Uh, and I would like to start first with asking you some questions um, about um, your methodology and uh, uh, the process that you used both for your book uh, uh, and for your testimonies. Um, I believe you uh, agreed with uh, the summary um, of the prosecution as to what are the three most important uh, sources um, for your uh, book acknowledgement. Um, I believe if, if I summarize it correctly, it is on one hand um, uh, the existing scholarship uh, that you used um, in writing your book and giving testimony today. The second one, the second source would be the interviews uh, that you had with um, people in Region 41, which at the time in Region 41, which I believe you call your primary data. And thirdly, your study and review of original DK documents, would you agree with that? Summary. I, I believe uh, I think you did it already, but uh, again, I would like to ask whether that is uh, uh, the main 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 Cả đôi chiếc cá trôi rùm sẽ kết mơ Đã chỉ vì thị xác xây Mùi bọc nhóm khăn ông cá Và mô tần ở đây mà mẹ trầm Thế xong phía tế bằng tay mẹ tầng cá xin kết phong đại Đi chân nè Chúng bố ai cá sạp xây xây Nia đã đọc bỏ đọc Cầm bị chìa bị chìa vào tay Hay nâng đọc bỏ đọc bỏ ไมโครโฮมพองได้เอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ
So I, I don't believe I said that yesterday. But for the, for the record, uh, David Chandler, I would say, is the one who has been very supportive of me and many others, which is to say that Ben Kiernan has not. I just haven't interacted as much with him. Maybe I was mistaken. Maybe I just had it from the book where you say, um, you know, for the Philippines has also been very supportive of Ben Kiernan as well. So it is a very supportive of my work. You know, it's a very supportive of my work. So it's a very supportive of my work. So it's a very supportive of my work. So it's a very Thank you, Mr. Defense Lawyer. So I think, uh, no doubt, I think many people, uh, Ben Kiernan among them, uh, I'm sure I thank, although I can't remember because I haven't read my forward uh, in quite some time, that I probably thank David Chandler as well. But anyway, just for the point of clarification, uh, historically in terms of my interactions, I've interacted much more with David Chandler and sort of seen him in person as the senior historian in my studies. Um, I've seen Ben Kiernan different times. I've gone to Yale, for example, and given talks before. I've had interactions. Uh, he's been supportive as well, but I think predominantly David Chandler is, is the one I've interacted with much more and who is a stronger influence on my, my work, which isn't to diminish the work of Ben Kiernan, but just to say that in terms of carrying out he's been definitely a, I think, a mentor to many people. David Chandler, that is. Indeed. Um, are there any um, points or, or, or paragraphs in, in your book? Especially think of, of um, the chapter dealing with um, uh, verses, verses 21, etc. Are there any points that you um, differ with your Chandler or Keenum or any other else's view on, on what happened uh, at the end of the book? Uh, do you have any points that you differ with your Chandler or Keenum or any other else's view on what happened at the end of the book? Do you have any Uh, thank you, Mr. Defense uh, Lawyer. Uh, I think that there definitely is somewhat of a consensus about the course of the purges, which areas and zones were targeted. Uh, I think the description of the networks and the labeling of different networks uh, is something where there's variation uh, with respect to many different people and how you understand the groupings. Uh, are taking place. Uh, I think there is some variation within that. Uh, but by and large, in terms of the course of the purges, I think that Ben Kiernan and David Chandler, there's many scholars, there's an agreement uh, supported by documentation about that course, how you label them again. I think it sounds like more of an interpretive like what is the nature of the things that people are targeted? Um, but we're taking it broader, not only in terms of um, purges or um, you know, functioning the 21st century, specifically speaking, ideology of CPK, um, um, structuring the CPK, etc. Um, um, any substantial points that you want to bring up in your book? Uh, differ from Peter Chandler or Keenan uh, as to uh, what happened between 75 and uh, Thank you, Mr. Defense so Lawyer. Uh, if I... I mean, I would have to guess which uh, aspect are you referring to the characterization of genocide to the degree of Marxist-Leninism. Uh, the sort of emphasis on revolutionary consciousness, racism, those are within the literature, and I know documents have been introduced to look the court that speak to these issues, um, where you're thinking just for a point of clarity of one of those in particular. Um, not necessarily. Any, any, any point, be it factual, be it um, interpreting, that you do not have the same views as you have seen or Chiki and Orchikin. ลูกได้จํารีกว่าตอนสลายจอมทมเจ้าอีลูกสาบรีเนโรอันตรชีต
ลำนังสัพเพียกรณ์ตัจการจุ่มตัวได้ใครมวยคือถ้าเอาไปเดกลางในขนมกำปิจิปิจิทับปัตไตคือวิมิญชานชานคลังนะไอขนมยาปีวันชานนี่คือชานนะดิฉันการดัชซูเอาเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนก่อนเจี๊ยบตาก่อนเจอคอฟฟี่เนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเนี่ยจุ่
Again, my question has been objected to. It's some new him to ban chara pa de sa pi bi dong ha pa da le nik nyam su sum lu da um lu bok nyam ta ta. Ta lu ban khue nyam bai de say nia ta tong ta nang ca bo sum hat ke ta lu yu khue say pi chan le hai nang ke nen. Look, but the only thing I'm so much into, but some of me to be young, so I don't get it. The last say ni that the agent you serve the government you serve, you just can tram tray. But that only if you tram tray, we are just a tour not the car. But suppose by can end, I just put more kingdom high with me and poor me and just run that thing to make boss mad. Just that you just make net to make got done that time. Um, I'm noting the third objection. Um, the question, um, I made it concrete. Um, concrete. Then we need to ban the chap clone and shoot the saw of pay boy. Cook him chunk for out the little mole. I had the car boss mad. Is that a subject that you hold? We are here, but then about more than look, you'll clean. Do you be Ben Cannon and Chandler that it is? Well, I'm not. Look at the end, can you man man chung chum to a day? This is different than a bit of me to win a year that I look mean to an app say you look at Jim Boom will have the car. Boss of Marty and I got a bit of a bat attack. Boss of Marty now, be now, I know. No, 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 I know. บ่าอ่าอ้างจำเรียกสมรัฐท่าอ้างจำเรียกปฏิสัทธิ์ในการจำต้องหรือบ่เอ่อถ้าปริญญาโรงอันตรายที่จำพวกสมรู้นี่
ចាំទៅគ្រប់ពេលដែលខ្ញុំអានសភើ <coughs> Um, I'll leave you to make your own assessment. Uh, I'm fair and I'm fair and as you said before, I'm just enough to apologize. Um, but having said that, I should note that the anthropological approach is distinct um, in terms of the ideology of genocide uh, that I laid out with the process of genocide priming, um, genocidal activation, manufacturing difference, um, looking at revolutionary consciousness and revolutionary consciousness. Um, I hope those might be small minor contributions uh, but the interpretation is that they're not uh, certainly I respect your, your judgment even if I hope that others might disagree with it I might get back to that um, a bit later uh, tomorrow um, I'm just going to do nothing up to that second um, I just want to go back to that second um, I just want to go back to that ចំណុចទីពីគឺប្រភពបរមីទីពីនៃការសម្ភារបស់លោកគណៈកាសង្កេត <coughs> 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 Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Co-Defense Lawyer. Uh, that's uh, not correct. I spoke to many people in the village, uh, over, over 100 uh, uh, you know, I formally interviewed many people, but I also, in terms of participant observation, and casual conversations, interviewed many more. ដោយការជួបរួមនឹងខ្ញុំមិនរត់តែជួបជាមួយមនុស្សកាន់តែច្រើនថាមតិសំណួរខ្ញុំផ្អែកចំនួនទាំងអស់នេះដោយផ្អ
ហើយលោកបាននិយាយអំពីមនុស្សកម្ពុជាខ្មែរក៏ហោមដូច្នេះ <coughs> ដូច្នេះខ្ញុំចាំដឹងថាតើវាមានមូលដ្ឋានអ្វីដែលលោកធ្វើការសន្តិសាន demographic data ជាតិរបស់លោកវិសាលទាំងនេះគឺថាយើងអាចទៅលើបទពិសោធន៍ប្រចាំថ្ងៃផងដែរខ្ញុំធ្វើការ <laughs> ក៏ដូចជាបានអាននៅសភាវរបស់ប្រជាជនចំពោះ <laughs> ໄດ້ແລະພວກເຮົາແມ່ນມີອຽນເມດເດີ້ນະທີ່ພວກເຮົາແມ່ນມີອຽນເມດເດີ້ນະທີ່ພວກເຮົາແມ່ນມີອ
let, let's stay for for a while at um, uh, the killing of all the Vietnamese as you, as you just Vietnam, they um, partially based on what you say are, were your conversations and, um, mostly based on uh, upon what and are you aware, are you aware of any um, academic Thank you, Mr. Defense Co lawyer. It would be good if you could be more specific since you seem to be thinking about one thing. Um, I should note the other cluster of information uh, that I drew upon in making those conclusions uh, is uh, DK uh, ideology. Radio broadcasts, so on and so forth, was another important factor, uh, ranging from uh, broadcasts to, for example, the executioner notebooks at S21. Uh, I'll get back to the Vietnamese more specifically, but I'm still uh, talking methodology. Um, so now, returning to my original question, uh, I'll be more specific. Uh, do you know anything about uh, sometimes fierce criticism មានការរីកគុណដែលថាអ្នកនិពន្ធអាមេរិកនៅ um, I, I am aware I would not characterize it as fierce, but I think there's, as I alluded to before, there's a disagreement uh, about whether the DK regime uh, was racist or was driven by uh, Marxist Leninism first and foremost in a stream into which uh, different groups were targeted. Um, so to provide one small example, uh, in Steve Hedder's argument in the review, uh, which is obviously critical, but I think they also have points of agreement. But I think about racism, they disagree. Uh, in Steve Hedder's view, <coughs> the targeting of ethnic Chinese uh, would classify as genocide. And so even though he disagrees about racism, he actually specifically points out that the 50% death toll that took place with ethnic Chinese should be considered genocide. Uh, so they disagree, in that regard, he actually picks up on an element in Ben Kiernan's work that Ben Kiernan doesn't accentuate. Um, maybe my question wasn't very clear, uh, so I'll rephrase. Um, my question was more about um, the controversy between, on one hand, Morris and Heather, which uh, seemed to focus on the question whether Kinan is indeed academically objective uh, in his works, in his books. Do you know anything about that? Um, I'm not sure I understand your question. Uh, thank you, Mr. Co-Defense so Lawyer. I think, uh, again, to be specific and clear, it would be good if you could read a passage that you're thinking of. Uh, uh, because I, I know the article I believe that you're talking about, but it's difficult. Would the general question, if you could present specifics, it would be easier to sort of get into the detail. Uh, otherwise, I'm, I'm guessing about which part you're let, me, let me be more concrete. Do you know anything about um, um, the um, problems that Keenan encountered when, he, um, when his program became um, Part of DC Chem. When, uh, Yale and uh, person who came connected to uh, DC Chem. Uh, the question is that Morris raised um, about the questions whether he is considering his political background could be, in fact, an objective person uh, involved in DC Chem. You, you being yourself an advisor to uh, DC Chem. Uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Co-Defense Lawyer. Um, I should note I became uh, an academic to advisor to DC CAM after that, uh, so I was actually not around when this uh, dispute took place. Um, again, it would be helpful to refer to specific text uh, and trying to make a determination about issues like this. If I believe I know what you're talking about is when uh, Stephen Morris critiqued Ben Kiernan uh, for his so earlier uh, views yeah, about the Khmer Rouge, is that what you're uh, talking uh, about? Uh, Again, uh, you know, having uh, specifics uh, would help. Uh, well, I think uh, Keenan himself in his um, 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 regime uh, says uh, that at one point in time how he, uh, presumably uh, by um, former so say, KR members, Khmer Rouge members, uh, um, uh, has been called, uh, called a quote-unquote uh, violent, odious hireling uh, of the uh, Vietnamese. Uh, in other words, that he was uh, a pro-Hanoi uh, communist uh, and that uh, uh, Marxism uh, and his views uh, might have uh, uh, endangered his objective. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Co-Defense Lawyer. Um, yes, I'm aware of that, and that's a thread that emerges as well uh, in the Steve Cutter article, I believe, uh, that you're referring to, uh, though it's mentioned, I think there are, as I said, a number of issues to me, the heart of that article uh, while saying, so questioning why there seems to be a diminishment, possibly, of the PRK regime, of the responsibility of the officials that went there, a diversion from that. Uh, to me, the point that, that I take out of that is that there's a difference about the degree to which Marxist-Leninism itself is responsible for the genocide that took place, as opposed to a strand of pre-existing racism. Uh, to me, most of the article plays out along those lines. But again, uh, it would be helpful to have references to specific page numbers, uh, like when the OCP provided the documentation uh, to actually see the text. Uh, it's easier to refer to it as opposed to trying to remember. You know, also, I should note that in terms of the documentation I was given to review, it could have been 10 to 15,000 pages, and it's, you know, so I'm trying to, I'm happy if my memory is refreshed and something's presented to comment upon it, otherwise, you know, I want to be accurate. So if you can present the documents, I think that would be helpful. It would also make the record clearer. It was, yes, I, I was just into the questions. Um, I'll, I'll get back to you on that. Um, now let me return to where I was, and that was uh, talking about uh, the interviews. Um, um, we talked a bit about representativeness. Um, did, did you have any mechanisms to um, test the veracity of the things that people told you? Um, the reliability of what, um, for instance, tip told you, did you have anything, um, any methodology to make sure that you were told of the fact that they really knew what um, they experienced? Um, I think it's a good question. Thank you, Mr. Co-Defense Lawyer. Uh, you know, and that's an uh, interesting question as well. I, I think the sort of quick answer is that at that time, uh, I tried to work through triangulation in the sense that if someone said something, I tried to triangulate with other people who could confirm in one way or the other about the historical events. So my concern was to represent the experience of the people in this district. Uh, as I said before, at that time, in Cambodia, for example, in this village, there was no electricity, there were no cell phones. Uh, you had, had to go and buy a to people's houses to try and arrange uh, an appointment. Uh, uh, the system of communication was completely different. Uh, now looking at things uh, from the perspective of this court, which has gotten all sorts of amazing resources that have been put into the record, um, it's completely different. And perhaps it's hard to imagine when you have a case file with hundreds of thousands of pages of documentation uh, different. So at the time, certainly, uh, you know, I didn't have this documentation that was available, so I had to work through this method of triangulation. I guess uh, what I found interesting 
uh, and the, some of the records that I read related to Compensium. Uh, the grandmother Yuk, who people talked about, appeared, testified in court, and said things that confirmed what I had heard before. Uh, in the meantime, we've had other things entered into the record uh, from this individual who I haven't seen all of the different transcripts, but who you think is Tia. Uh, and again, I couldn't even tell you because I'd have to go back and check my original uh, coding key. Uh, but again, once again, it's confirmed what I heard. So in a, in a nice way, and I say this is the story of the people in the village at the time. I did the best I could in 1994 and 1995 when I was doing this. But I guess I've been struck by the fact that so much of what the court has found in the transcripts that were introduced confirmed what I was told and what I tried to do the triangulation with. Uh, so yeah, so at the time, I did the best I could using this method of triangulation to think that a system like this court existed in terms of massive quantities of information. That just didn't exist at the time. Uh, you know, like the interview with Lore or something, finding him was very difficult and both moped rides out into the countryside. Um, but again, you know, so the fact that Grandmother Yut is there, uh, she confirmed events in a way that's similar uh, to what I heard, uh, the transcripts that came out about the targeting of the Jones, uh, confirms what I heard, the discussion of events relating to Ram. Confirm what I heard. The discussion of the events at Wat Phnom Pro Phnom Surai confirm what I heard. Uh, so by and large, uh, you know, as a graduate student, anthropology graduate student, I did the best I could, and it seems to be by and large confirmed by documentation that's emerged uh, at this court, in particular with the relationship uh, mentioned in several by several different people about the destruction of the Jam and Kampong Siem at that time. I'm not sure if I, if I know um, which documents you're referring to when you're talking about um, confirmation. Uh, however, setting that aside, let me just focus on one very small example. It's not terribly relevant, maybe, but uh, you spoke to, uh, for instance, um, told you that Grandmother Yud uh, killed her husband. Um, can you tell us how you went about to verify this claim about Yud's uh, husband? Thank you, Mr. Defense Code Lawyer. Um, so again, as I said, I presented the experience of people, the stories that they told, and as best I could, I tried to triangulate. But in terms of finding uh, other cadre working there, it's very difficult, and people often didn't want to be identified as such. Uh, but I managed to track down a number of local level cadre. Uh, but as I mentioned before, uh, grandmother yet does not acknowledge uh, that she uh, shot her husband. But there is acknowledgement that she was fine. She didn't shed a tear when he was taken away. Uh, so the fact that I think the point that emerges out of that, what is the truth? Is she going to say that in a public forum? I don't know. But the fact is her husband was taken away. Uh, she resolved not to do anything about it and was viewed as renouncing even her husband for the revolution. Uh, so in that sense, uh, you know, I leave it to the court. Uh, they're going to pursue this to sort of try and resolve what happened. But the accounts, by and large, converge uh, very much. Um, is Tip, um, let, me, let me rephrase, was Tip in, in your observation um, he was referred to as a cadre in common speech by people who knew him. Uh, the definition of what a cadre is, there's a colloquial one versus something a cadre as espoused by the CPK statutes. Uh, so I think it's important to differentiate that locally, 
ដោយសារពាក្យពេញនៅមូលដ្ឋានសេនតាប្រាប់ពាក្យពេញនៅ uh, thank you, Mr. Co-Defense Lawyer. Um, I would have to check the transcript. I, you know, I, I don't remember that, him saying that, but I would need to check the transcript to be sure. Did you, at one point in time, ever speak to someone who did acknowledge that either he or she was a CPK founder, a CPK member, or uh, had a high-ranking function, let's say, as of um, sub-district chief or district chief. Did you ever speak to any, anybody who would fit those two descriptions? Uh, thank you, Mr. Co-Defense Lawyer. Um, so I've spoken at the time I was doing my uh, field work. Uh, as you know from the history, the uh, Civil War was still going on, the uh, fighting was there, uh, there were active Khmer Rouge in the area where I was doing research, uh, it was very different in terms of the security situation, uh, people did not readily admit that they were Khmer Rouge, uh, so it was actually a degree of trust to get people to talk. Um, and as well, in terms of speaking to high-ranking members uh, of the CPK, uh, I welcomed such conversation, but at the time I was doing this research, uh, they weren't available in the way they are now, where some live in Phnom Penh. Uh, anyways, it was a completely different situation. Uh, so the answer is no. Uh, with the explanation of the thing to understand how I found the people I did and that it was difficult to find people at the time I did. Uh, you really have to look at the historical context. Um, so would it then be fair for me to say that when you speak about um, the Khmer Rouge ideology uh, or a Khmer Rouge policy uh, to target the charm or to kill all the Vietnamese, uh, is predominantly or, or even almost exclusively based on either the secondary sources that you read or contemporaneous documents and not so much on interviews you yourself had with uh, cadres, people who could know. Uh, thank you, Mr. Co-Defense Lawyer. Uh, so again, the sources of information in terms of the JAM, uh, they're the broader uh, ideological pronouncements on things like Phoebus radio broadcast, uh, we have different documentation, some of which uh, the office of the co-prosecutors uh, raised and put before us before. Um, but in particular, in talking about Region 41, uh, Kompungsiem District, uh, Kum Kerla, and Ospai, and others, and Kompungsiem, uh, as I said, I went through and I talked to the villagers, I went to every household in the village, and I talked to people to get a history of what happened, uh, to each of the family about their way of life, uh, their farming, but into the, you know, sort of found out about their life into the present through the PRK period, uh, into the UNTAC period, um, and in doing that, as I mentioned before, I would talk, people would mention the number of deaths, and they would mention explicitly over and over again that the jams were taken, uh, and many of them would say all of the jams were taken. Uh, so the information comes from speaking to people who were scattered throughout the area, concentrated uh, into commune rooms at the time uh, that talked about this. And it, uh, at the time, I did not go in seeking to find out about the genocide against ethnic, against Joms, but it emerged in the discussions, and people noted upon it, it was something they experienced. Uh, and as I say, uh, there's also 
you know, other documentation. There's a PRK document that emerged uh, that's in the Nike volume uh, that talks about the destruction of the uh, jobs of Kompungsiam district. Uh, I interviewed uh, Tiep, as you know, uh, who saw the, the record of it. Uh, so again, there are a number of different sources that led to uh, that conclusion. I will, I, will, I will tell you what my problem is. Um, you are here um, because you are primarily an anthropologist. Um, you spoke to people, you did participating observation. Um, at the same time, um, excuse the, um, the phraseology, but you make very sweeping, generalizing um, statements about Khmer Rouge ideology, uh, about Khmer Rouge policy, infrastructure, etc. I'm just trying to um, find out exactly what the sources are for these sometimes very sweeping statements. Uh, the racism against the Vietnamese, where does it come from? Does it come from you speaking to some villages in one particular uh, district? Or is it coming from your understanding of uh, Chandler and Keen on the one hand, uh, and to bring these doctrines on the other? In other words, I'm, I'm trying to get transparency as to sources for these sometimes quite sweeping claims for generalizations. Your Honor, I think the question should be more specific about which generalizations is he saying sweeping? And uh, so I think the question is, uh, is being uh, here as a uh, scholar of genocide studies. As well as an anthropologist, so I think the question uh, is accurate or, um, um, specific um, in relation to what council says is a sweeping claim. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It would appear that in the end, council himself has realized that he has to be more concrete by, for instance, managing, um, uh, sorry, uh, mentioning as an example what are the sources for what you said about racism. I think this is perhaps easier to answer for, the, for um, uh, Professor Hinton than general sweeping, to use your word, questions on sources for his work. So perhaps that's the way forward. Uh, no problem. I'll be happy to, to limit. Um, Khmer Rouge ideology was racist when um, it uh, came to their views of Vietnamese slash um, Vietnam. Um, that is a very sweeping uh, uh, statement. And my question is, what are your sources for that? Is that your conversation with uh, villagers? Or is that based upon your understanding of contemporaneous document or your understanding of the situation? Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Co-Defense Lawyer. Um, I think that the, this issue is discussed in my book. Uh, there are footnotes in my book, um, so you actually have a trail of footnotes that you can follow. More broadly, I should note the book was also uh, emerged from, you know, part of it from my research from 1994 to 1995. Since that time, I continued to do research over time. Uh, in addition, uh, I don't think that, uh, you know, those documents we've seen earlier uh, introduced by the Office of the uh, Prosecutors uh, you know, put forth or not rare instances of the use of the word UN. 
uh, for example. Uh, the word UN is used all over the place. And CPK uh, is not at all unusual. That term has a valence of animus and often racism against it. Um, in my book, I provide an example of one of my informants, uh, a highly intelligent person I spoke with at length. Uh, not from Banyan, uh, but from Jump City, uh, who suddenly sort of began talking about the UN going on and on and on about it. Uh, there's a larger body of scholarship. I refer you to an article by Penny Edwards uh, that occurred, uh, that is in the volume edited by Judy Ledgerwood and Steve Hedder uh, that refers to the UNTAC period and as well talks about animus, the use of the word UN, uh, these long-standing tropes of the Vietnamese as thieving uh, perfidious, uh, evil others uh, who are trying to uh, betray Cambodians, steal from them, uh, take their land. Uh, this, again, this has a long genealogy. Uh, it also existed, uh, though it had a Buddhist valence during the long old regime. Um, so again, I, when I say, uh, I guess, you know, the notion of sweeping claims, I agree, it's always good to interrogate notions that are made, and that's certainly your job. Uh, I would be be doing the same thing if I were you. Uh, but I think the scholarly consensus, uh, and by that I also step out of the domain of uh, scholars, uh, you know, this small group of scholars who work on Cambodia, to talk about comparative genocide scholars in general. Um, he brought in Bill Chavis, who disagrees uh, as well. And I think his view should be taken into consideration, even though I don't think uh, he was accurate. He doesn't have enough knowledge to make fraud claims. But there are a number of other people in the field of genocide studies who characterize this. Uh, as a genocide and what occurred with uh, ethnic uh, Johns, ethnic Vietnamese as genocide. Uh, so, you know, it's a big, it's, in one sense it's sweeping, but I think also it's one, there's a wide, a large number of people who agree about it. And I think there's a lot of evidence uh, that supports that claim. Uh, but again, you know, it's your job to contest that, and I respect that. Uh, and I guess the trial chambers will decide for themselves based on the evidence you bring forth, uh, what the prosecution brings forth. And I look forward to their conclusions. Obviously, I'm not here to give evidence myself. I've spoken to many Cambodians who, uh, without any racist undertone, use the word "you" um, to describe Vietnamese. But are you saying that the mere word "you" uses the word "you" means that you are racist, and therefore you find to um, a one-point in time commit genocide against a group of Vietnamese? Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, co-defense lawyer. Uh, and I, you know, you make a, a very good point that we should uh, sort of consider words and the way they're deployed. And again, the word UN uh, is deployed in different ways. Uh, some people do use it as sort of a colloquial term. I mean, if you could do other language equivalents where people take words that have often racist connotations and unknowingly use them, um, or words that stereotype other groups, uh, and use those words in a sort of non-thinking manner matter-of-fact manner, um, but, uh, and there's scholarship, uh, according to your age, there's one article, but there's a large scholarship uh, that supports the view that uh, you know, there is, when people use the word UN, often a racist undertone, uh, and as I said before, sometimes people even almost spit out the word. Um, it's not to say by any means that, you know, all Cambodians go around calling uh, ethnic Vietnamese UN, uh, just like with racist discourses in the United States, not everyone sharing them, but it's a subcomponent that exists. Uh, there are ideas that exist about this, and they, during this process that I talk about uh, in terms of the manufacturing of difference with the crystallization of difference, uh, you have these discourses of hate that become mobilized, uh, and you get views of the other who become stigmatized and it becomes incorporated into this process. In terms of uh, the use of uh, the word UN uh, and CPK discourses, um, if we go back and look at different transcripts, there are things like uh, land swallowing UN. In other words, it's not as if the word UN is decontextualized and used alone in a statement uh, to say something to affect. Uh, and 
you know, 19. Uh, 30, the no, UN Uh, thank you, Mr. Co-Defense Lawyer. Out of respect for the late King, uh, I don't necessarily want to address that directly, and I'd also think that you would need to introduce the specific context in which it was said, the specific statement. Um, but speaking more generally, uh, because it's a word that is used by many people. Uh, when people use the word UN and refer to Vietnamese uh, with a series of negative attributions, that discourse, I think, is racist, stigmatizes the group. Uh, again, you know, what is stigma? It's where you have an essentialized understanding of another human being and you attribute singular negative qualities to them. And I think it's clear uh, from existing evidence, including evidence that we've gone over earlier, that those negative attributions were given to people called UN uh, in Khmer Rouge discourse, uh, including uh, you know, the document Black, uh, the Black Paper. Uh, that, you know, actually, I guess we haven't really talked about it, but goes back and traces this long genealogy, uses the word UN. Uh, so I, I think, uh, again, in my opinion, uh, it's clear that the word UN Given the context, if you look at the context and the way it's used, has racist overtones. Uh, I think other scholars supported that. Um, again, if you want one article I cite uh, that's gone into it by a distinguished scholar, Penny Edwards, uh, who's looked at French colonialism uh, in Cambodia. Uh, she goes into some detail about this, looking at one mobilization of it during the UNTAC period. Uh, you can open the newspapers uh, and look at events during, often during elections, uh, especially after the UNTAC period. There are often were attacks on ethnic Vietnamese that were taking place at those times, uh, you know, both during the UNTAC period and afterwards. It's a politics people are mobilized based on pre-existing animus that exists with ethnic Vietnamese in Cambodia. Um, I mean, there's widespread evidence that this is the case, uh, but to say to every time it's used doesn't mean that there's this animus. No, I think you're correct to say sometimes some people do it, but again, I think it's the use of a word that has a negative valence that people use uh, someone in ignorance at the time. Uh, it's almost four, it's actually four o'clock, Mr. Uh, I would like to request, uh, Mr. Hinton to have a look at that um, speech that uh, Lady Hinton gave in January 1979. Uh, I believe it's part of this uh, line. I would like to read it at the moment. I would like to read it at the moment. If we could just have the document number. Um, Mr. Hinton, you want to, if we could just have the document number. Mr. Hinton, you want to read it at the moment. Mr. Hinton, you want to read it at the moment. E three seven three three five. Three three five. Ba okun, okun luk sa sa cha ne jum nien. Ta sam na ka ne thay ni dao pi chup tam ra hoi. Oi me ka pa ke tam na ka sa na ka tam rap thay tam ni. Hai sa na ka luk tam ban to thun ne thay ai. ที่ดอกบัวมุ้ยใครมีเนื้อชนะพิพอนดอกบัวมุ้ยจับดาวมีมองบัวมุ้ยพรึกให้สัมนาการในทางไอ้ไอ้เนี่ยอ่อนหย